do not repeat this. I am not trying to speedrun getting kicked off of YouTube. Today, we're going to be making benzoyl chloride, also known as the Wish.com tear gas. At least, that's what it feels like. Anyway, we're going to start out with 600 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I don't know why I used this giant dildo looking graduated cylinder, but I just wanted to make sure everything was accurate. So that's how I got the 600 milliliters from it. We're going to add this into a one liter round bottom boiling flask. I just wanted to show you this really cool shot that I got as well. We're also going to put this onto a hot plate because we're going to need stirring. Next, we're going to get some benzo alcohol. I actually bought a gallon since it's way cheaper. Uh, other Amazon sellers were trying to make a profit on me saying it's a good product, but they're professional cappers. Again, I always get the most hard cap to get off ever. We're going to measure out 78 milliliters of benzyl alcohol. I just don't show the other 28 mil portion because I kind of forgot to record it. A stir bar was placed in and stirring was turned on. We're going to add the benzyl alcohol in small portions slowly just so we don't overdo it with the reaction. And we're going to add all 78 milliliters until we're finally done. I also want to take the time to apologize for not getting a video out sooner. Uh, school has been kind of giving me the Bill Cosby treatment lately. You can see here, when I add the benzo alcohol, the solution turns nice and opaque. This just happens because we add it, and we're just going to keep going forward as we do it. This dumb reaction already happened before I could even put it into a reflux, but we're still going to reflux it. The top section is the benzoyl chloride, and the bottom section is the water and HCl. The top section of the reflux has this gas adapter, and this gas adapter actually leads to a sodium hydroxide solution just because there's going to be some HCl vapors coming out, and it will neutralize any of those that come out. Believe me, they are not fun to breathe in. To make the sodium hydroxide solution, I just put a random amount of sodium hydroxide, and I filled up the beaker with some distilled water. I then connected the hose to a glass funnel to make an inverted funnel trap. Here, you can see me place the funnel in, and we want to make sure that it's fully covered so no gases come out. Now, you shouldn't expect any of the sodium hydroxide to go into the tube, but that was not the case for me, and I'll describe that in a second. Here, you can see the condensation starting to form on the inside of the flask, and that's a good sign that things are starting to go. I got a little power hungry with the regulator, and this thing started to boil very violently, so I turned it down a little bit so that it wasn't as bad. The cool part is, is you can actually see the two immiscible layers kind of boiling together and pushing against each other, which I think is actually really interesting to see. Here you can see the white fumes go up, and then you can see the condensation slowly go back down into the boiling flask. In the next clip shown, you can actually see the two immiscible layers a lot easier, and it's actually, again, really, really cool to see it. Now, let's go over the mechanism. So, this is a SN2 reaction, which is a type of nucleophilic substitution whereby a lone pair of electrons on a nucleophile attacks an electron-deficient electrophilic center and bonds to it, resulting in the expulsion of a leaving group. In this case, hydrochloric acid donates a proton to the hydroxyl group, making a positive charge in the oxygen. The chloride anion then does a nucleophilic attack on the opposite side of the positive oxygen, resulting in water being a leaving group and the chlorine taking its place. This gives us a product of benzoyl chloride, water, and a bunch of coughing from me because this is kind of like a wish.com tear gas. So luckily something went wrong for me and uh, it actually sucked the sodium hydroxide back to the reflux column and I got to redo everything. Sodium hydroxide will neutralize the benzoyl chloride, so guess who got to do the experiment twice? When you're actually finished, it should look like this with the two immiscible layers, which the top layer is going to be the benzoyl chloride. 
it is very important to let everything cool or you're going to get some nice acid fumes and benzoyl chloride fumes coming out. Uh, now, I did it when it was kind of hot. So, yes, I got the fumes coming out and that's why I'm telling you not to. So I had to do this in a couple of different steps just because my separation funnel is very, very small. It's only 250 milliliters. Now, it is important to discard the bottom layer and not the top layer. The top layer is the benzoyl chloride. Now, the bottom layer is full of acid and water and probably some of the benzoyl alcohol uh, that didn't react. And you need to be very, very careful and not have it be warm because you can see the fumes again. It is very important that the acid is handled with care and that you're in a very well ventilated area or a fume hood or even outside just because of all the fumes coming out. The acid should be neutralized and the instruments that you're using should be washed with sodium hydroxide to destroy any benzoyl chloride. Once the bottom layer is fully taken away, you're going to wash this three times with saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. This will neutralize any acid that's left over and it will clean it up. Once the bubbling went down, a glass stopper was put in and we're going to shake everything around. So again, that we can neutralize all of the hydrochloric acid that's left over. It is also important to frequently vent as CO2 gas will build up as you do it. Everything was left to settle, and now this layers actually switch now. So the top layer is the saturated sodium bicarbonate solution, and the benzoyl chloride is now the bottom layer. We're going to drain the bottom benzoyl chloride layer into a fresh beaker, and we're going to discard the top sodium bicarbonate layer. Again, we wash two more times with about 50 to 100 milliliters of the saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. Let it settle and drain the bottom layer into a fresh beaker. We're going to add some anhydrous magnesium sulfate to dry any water that came over with it. You'll leave it to dry for about 15 to 20 minutes and you must put a cover on it unless you want to cry and wheeze and cough and have, you know, hell knocking at your door. It's then poured into a small round bottom flask and a fractional distillation is set up. This is what my fractional distillation setup looks like. And you can see I have another sodium hydroxide trap coming out from the vacuum adapter, just so no fumes come out. A thermometer is going to be very important in this step as benzoyl chloride does have a boiling point and we want to collect it at that temperature. We're going to collect everything at 177 through 180C and discard anything else that comes before that. Here's how my receiving flask is set up. You can see that the vacuum port has a tube on it and it's also connected to the sodium hydroxide trap so we can destroy any benzoyl chloride that comes out. Again, this is a really, really important step, especially if you're in a garage like me. If you're in a fume hood, that'd be a little different, but this is very, very important. Here's my heating mantle, and you'll also want to wrap your entire heating mantle in aluminum foil and the reflux column just so everything can condense over. Here, you can see the benzoyl chloride climb up and slowly go up the tube. Surprisingly, I didn't start collecting until 177, so I just kept everything that came over. Here, you can see the benzoyl chloride slowly dripping over. And again, I really did not have anything that came before the 177 degrees Celsius. So I didn't decide to switch out the flask or anything like that. Uh, everything just started coming over at that temperature. It's okay that it's cloudy right now as we're going to clean it up after. As it slowly started to boil over, it started to froth more. And that means we know we're pretty close to the end of the distillation. Here is the final amount of benzoyl chloride that we have, and you can see the final drops slowly coming over. The leftover material in the flask is this weird, yellow, goopy, like sticky residue. We're going to add some 3A molecular sieves just so that we can dry out any of the water present in the benzoyl chloride. We can see that it slowly starts to clear up and that dust in there is just from the 3A sieves and it should slowly settle down. Once I let everything settle, you can see that we have a very clear solution of the benzoyl chloride and just the molecular sieves in there.
a fresh amber glass vial, had some 3A sieves also added to it, and then we're going to pour the benzoyl chloride onto that as well. I did not record the final amount as I was very pissed off and I kept breathing in the stuff even though I was in a well ventilated area and it's really stupid and I hate it. It's then capped and sent off to hell where it belongs.